Alrighty then. All right, test, test, test. Hello, hello, hello. Cool. All right, it's working. Just checking my uh, volume. It's all good to go. All right, let me go ahead and show this. Uh, it's probably it's been a while since you last seen it on uh, YouTube. I was I just want to let you guys know that I have been broadcasting on Twitch, um, and this is where I did a lot of this right here. All right, this is just the. I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna be working on this right now. I'm just want to go ahead and show you. I do want to let you know that. Uh, I intend to do a lot of live sculpting, not so much on my YouTube channel anymore, but more on Twitch. And I want to ideally have the videos I do on Twitch uh, where I'll download it and I'll process it so that it's sped up. Uh, but a lot of the live sculpting will be done there because I feel that I think that'd probably be the best, just to keep the help, the channel a little more cleaner, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, if you want to see how where I posed all of this and cleaned it up and made it the way it is right here, you go ahead and uh, check it out. So I'm just going to go ahead and show some close-ups right here. Um, I'll be working on making Popeye, a, kind of a realistic form of him. I made a clay sculpture a while ago uh, of Popeye, more realistic, and I wanted to remake that. So uh, let me go ahead and check here real quick. Just go ahead and give a quick little look around. This still needs some patching up here and there. Uh, and then I need to slice into the pieces, which then I'll 3D print. I intend to make, I intend to print this out to be about 10 inches tall. I was originally going to add this little thing to his hand. Because I thought that would be a pretty cool little detail to have. Is have like the uh, Ultra Plus. It's kind of like Ultra Plus thing on his fist right here. I guess I'll go ahead and show real quick. But I'm not going to be working on, I'm not going to be working, working on this piece. Just to give you an example of what I had in mind. So it's going to be something like this. Something along the lines of that. Where he's going to like punch him. Kind of like that. A bit of a turn, I suppose. A little twist. Like a plus ultra kind of thing. But I thought that it was a little distracting, so I didn't want that there. So I just placed it this side right here. But yeah, tell me what your thoughts of it are and what are your thoughts about me doing the whole YouTube Twitch thing. Uh, eventually, I was thinking about maybe broadcasting them both at the same time. Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think about me possibly? When I want to do something, I might have to do research into it, such as maybe playing a game or like a, I don't know. Like uh, if I ever want to make a, something from a game, I might want to have to play it. I might have that game available when I, and I have to capture some images. I might go ahead and uh, do that. But uh, what else was I going to say? Um, that was pretty much what I was going to say. I was about my, me broadcasting live more on Twitch. Um, and then I'll process the video that upload them on here. Oh, I'm having issues with the 3D printer still. Uh, I need to send a video uh, to the company for their, their Delta printers to see what the issue is. Uh, and uh, I'm upgrading one of them, one of them, and I technically have two I guess I could print with but the one I don't like it's one of my older printers and it's not like it's decent but the Creality uh, CR10 is the one I have that I like to use that uh, I've been using lately but um, yeah cool all right let's go ahead and me have me switch to the Popeye piece uh, I suppose and I'm going to change the name of this broadcast soon uh, let's see but I just want to show this As you can see it looks pretty awesome like it. I was thinking about making some copies. So yeah, some change. I need to add some details here to the rips. It's it's the infamous fight with All Might versus the Nomu. I made sure the clothing was pretty precise with the show. Yeah, it's gonna be about ten inches tall total from the top of his fist to like the bottom of the base right here. I was thinking about twelve inches, but I think that's a little overkill, especially if I was to make a mold of it. All right, so let's go ahead and get going here. Um, I think I'm broadcasting public. Let me just double check. Sometimes I have a tendency of accidentally. Yeah, okay, good. Cool, right there. All right, I'm gonna go hop over to the Popeye. If anyone has any questions about it or any comments or suggestions, I'll go ahead and look at them. Uh, it's definitely most helpful. And yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, get to this right here. I'm going to go ahead and. Hop over to the uh, Popeye piece now. 
I'm not going to save anything. I haven't done anything to this, so there's no purpose. The Popeye piece is right here. I'm going to go ahead and jump over to... Do I want the one with history or no history? Oh, this is going to be... I want to say it's annoying to edit later on. No, it should be fine. Yeah, I think. Do I want history? I'll just upload the history. Uh, project has been changed. Do I have to save changes? No, since I... All right, cool. So this is a Popeye piece I'm, I just started working on today. Uh, I was working on it about an hour or two ago on Twitch. And yeah, it's looking great so far. I might tweak the body shape and everything. The funny thing about these fists are fists I had made from the previous project with All Might versus Nomu. Uh, I took uh, Nomu's fists, or no, it's All Might's fists because I tweaked them. I imported them onto this, I ex exported and imported into this mod onto the, for this model. Um, so yeah, I'm just I haven't started I haven't made any of the fine details yet. And I plan on doing it uh, in this broadcast. So uh, if you just if you're just joining or wondering about the All Might vs No Move piece, just skip back a little bit, maybe about five minutes or so, and you could see it. I was talking about uh, Twitch and YouTube and my my uh, plans for the piece. I want to start working on uh, Popeye here, so I'm going to uh, start making his head, and I'll start refining the body right here. I want him to be really menacing looking. I just love the uh, muscle features and everything. So I'm going to start making the head. So uh, to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and append a separate shape here. I'm going to go ahead and go to geometry and I'm going to, not geometry. I'm going to go over here uh, and append a sphere. Boom. Got to make sure I select that. I don't know why uh, ZBrush has not made it so that it jumps automatically to your next sub tool. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I guess put on, nah, never mind. All right, let's shrink this down a bit to about head size. Let's go to the uh, BMV, BMV. I should try to deform brush a little more often. I want to get the rough head shape. Oh my gosh. All right, let's try that again. That's better, okay. Now, Popeye has a very, I'm going to make Popeye with a very square jaw. Uh, I'm going to shrink this down some more. I don't want his head to be too large. Uh, I'll probably ex make his body larger a little bit later. Bring his uh, bring his body wider, and then extend his body out more in just a moment. Uh, yeah. All right. Cool. Remember, if you have any questions at all during the broadcast, uh, if you want to like to see something or some kind of process or kind of method, I'll go ahead and do that. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna start carving out the eyes and everything. Uh, ideally, eyes are about center of the head, right here. I'm gonna take the move brush again. I wanna create kind of this right here, this shape, and then yeah, right there, that's pretty good. BCB. Now, it's very important, like whether you're traditional or digital that you understand the anatomy, uh, I want to carve this part out right here, I'm going to smooth it, kind of give me the general kind of shape, I want to give Popeye kind of a kind of square kind of jaw, right here, kind of the cheekbones right there, I want to carve this out right here for the temple, uh, along with the brow. Right there. So as you can see, it's already a general kind of skull, which is perfect, and I did that pretty quick. It's very important to kind of jump to that stuff. Uh, there is a very prominent bone along right here, which kind of carves into here. This is a good kind of basis for me to start with, I suppose. Um, so I'm gonna mess with this shape right here by maybe using the move brush. Oops, the MV right here. Uh, I'm gonna just mess around with that. I have a bit of a reference uh, from, I still have that piece that I made a while ago. I'm gonna just kind of bring this in, bring this jaw up. The bone kind of comes down here, which then, or the skull. So it's kind of, it's already skull already. See, that's pretty good. Just those little, little changes I made to it. Uh, made it exactly kind of like a skull, because it's very important, the face. Uh, I'm probably gonna go ahead and dynamish this soon. As you can see here, the geometry is very meh. Um, the nice thing about traditional sculpting is the fact that you don't have to worry about geometry in terms of like resolution of it, and it's automatically high resolution already, which is nice. And the only downside is pretty much like uh, the piece can be damaged pretty easily. But okay, so yeah, tell me what your thoughts are. I'm open to criticism. All right, so say like the body seems too small here; it should be larger. Uh, the arms should maybe be. I'll probably shrink the arms down a bit. 
Uh, I'll add the muscles in a bit, but as I said before, I'm working on the head. Uh, let's see. He has a fairly large nose, so I'm going to go to. I'm going to do this. Instead of this little function right here, it's called Sculptures Pro. As you can see, if I don't have that on, whatever I do to it, it just makes the geometry very blocky, as you can see, right? But with Sculptures Pro on, and you see the geometry here, look at this. High resolution automatically added to it. So with Sculptures Pro, without Sculptures Pro. See? It's like with clay. All right? It uh, tessimates and decimates, the, I think it tessimates and decimates when I'm using the brushes. So it adds automatic detail on spot on. So I can work with this without having to worry about adding things. So if I wanted to add a nose, I could just go like this here. Give him kind of a large nose here. You know, Popeye, I think I'm pretty sure has a kind of a large nose. I'll start sculpting the features out right here. So as you can he see here, when I start smoothing the piece out, oops, uh, psh, 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 right here, see it, if I smooth it, it creates more geometry, allows me to sculpt with. Um, so that's I thought that was always a cool little thing. I'm gonna kind of carve this out, smooth this out right here, smooth that out. So it's not there yet. I'm going to give him a pretty square jaw. I'm going to give him quite the unhappy look. All right, I'm going to make sure I enhance kind of this line right here. Come up right there. There's a muscle that comes down off the cheek here. La, la, la. Trying to go quick right here. Let's get him some nostrils. Some kind of mean. Kind of nostrils right here. We'll, we'll fix it. As you can see, though, it's very prominent. I'm just doing this on the spot. Uh, I'm probably going to have to crease this in a bit more with the dam, the dam standard brush. It's a Damien brush, but it's funny, short for Damien is dam stand, like dam. give him a little bit of a unhappy kind of look right here. I'll give him a cap in just a moment. Let's go ahead. Maybe it might be a good idea for me to do that now. I'll probably give him some ears real quick. Uh, let's go ahead and maybe make this more prominent. It's, Popeye is a lot a bit older so the, the skull features are a lot more noticeable. Uh, I'll go ahead and kind of bring that out for the jaw here. I'll shrink the head down and everything. Uh, it's very easy to do that, just like this. I'll fix his back and everything in a moment. His back is a little off. Got that right there. Uh, let's go ahead and maybe add it, give him a cap. I'll work on the eyes in a moment. Uh, it's very important though that when you work on this that you don't take too much time doing certain things. You kind of have to kind of do things quickly. Just kind of give, oh, I don't like that. I don't like that either. Okay. You gotta just move from the one thing to the next. Gotta give him kind of a. Or I want him angry. Right there. I want him to have more of a jaw. So I'm gonna. You know, it's like a sailor, like a badass sailor. I think I might bring his head in a moment. Uh, nice thing about the the brush, the the sculptures brush, it acts like to me it feels like it acts like rubbing alcohol to super sculpy. It really smooths out the details. Uh, it really like uh, makes a nice surface to work with. I want to just pop up on my screen real quick. Uh, Popeye. Oh, he does kind of like a like a butt chin, I suppose. His body is quite kind of lanky. Uh, 
one he's quite lanky he's got kind of like a kind of a butt chin I suppose so I'll, I'll go ahead and maybe give him that I'll give him maybe a bit of a lips here along with the crease. There's a crease in the lips right here, which this comes down right here. This split right there. There's supposed to be a bit of muscle that comes up. Put it this here. There it goes. A little better. There it goes. I guess you go with BIT. I'm going to start inserting the eyes here right now. Let me just make sure, confirm that these are the size of the eyes that they should be. About right. Oh my gosh, that scared me. Like, what did I just do? out right here so this is all very important right here I'm doing just kind of positioning the fe key features here oh wrong I might change it a bit later. I might fix it. I'm just trying to get what I need, and then I can go ahead and subtract what I don't want. I feel his head may be a little too wide, so I might go ahead and uh, go to BMB right here. I'm going to probably bring his jaw in right here a bit. Give him some ears real quick. A B I N right no B I T B I T. I'm gonna give some ears. I'm gonna use the spheres. Go to move brush right here. I want to center this up right here. Flatten one side. Flatten the back a little bit. Turn the ear. Turn a bit and then kind of plug it in here. Rotate it because ears are a slight, a slight angle. When we go here, BMV, the jaw is relatively the rule of thumb here is about halfway or across the head. Very important, you know, if you want to help uh, speed the process of sculpting or drawing, that you go ahead and not uh, sculpting and drawing. Sculpting, you it's good to know the 2D aspect of it to know the rules. Uh, same goes for drawing. Uh, usually, it's more beneficial to do drawing than sculpting. It's uh, you can draw really well, you have an idea of how things are supposed to be made. So I'm going to make his ears real quick. Uh, so the general rule with ears is that they're kind of this shape. Uh, if you're familiar with the shape, as I said before, if you're familiar with the 2D shape, it would be a lot easier for you to fix and adjust. Um, I'm just going to do a quick smoother right here to kind of test it a little bit and then I'll get a little better. I go to the build up brush here. I'm going to carve the ear out here. That's not what I want. I got to go right here. The rule is that you get, not the rule, but like the I guess it's like a rule is that the th there's a part of the ear that goes around and loops around here. The little eardrum here. Uh, right here. Let's go ahead and cut that out right there. There is a little thing called like a fork in the ear here. So it's kind of like here. I 
go too crazy into the ear right now. Um, the MV, and I'm gonna pull it. The move brush is almost like pinching a traditional sculpture, kind of, but at the same time, when you pinch it, it kind of adds more clay to it because you don't really lose kind of too much of the thickness, uh, depending on the size of the brush. Kind of, I'm just gonna stick with a general shape right there. I'm not gonna go too crazy. Um, the older some people get, the things that grow a lot, it tends to be the nose and ears. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the, uh, let's shrink the head down a bit. The head seems still too fairly large for the body. I don't know. I think what I need to do is probably enlarge this lower body here. So I might have to go ahead and do that soon. Uh, Oh, hey, Popeye and I got notified by your stream right now. What? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, cool. All right. Hello, uh, Haro uh, Des. Haro Des. Uh, nice. Oh, that's interesting. That is very strange. Uh, yeah. I just I just thought about making Popeye today. Um, I've been thinking about making a few different pieces, and guess what? I'm trying to make a realistic kind of Popeye. Uh, so I'm trying to take certain tones, and I'm trying to... Uh, certain like features or aspects, or, yeah, certain features of the Popeye incorporating into a kind of realistic form of Popeye. That is definitely funny. You're watching Popeye, all of a sudden you got notified about it. Nice, cool. So if you have any questions or anything, you talk about your day. If you want to hear music or something, I'll go ahead and play that. Uh, I, I plan on kind of streaming uh, either on Twitch or if you want to come to think about it, since you're here, I can go ahead and show you the other piece. Uh, the if you're familiar with a uh, uh, Boku no Hero Academia. Let me save this real quick. All right, here. It's just saving real quick. Hold on one moment. Uh, uh, if you're familiar with the show at all, the anime, uh, I, I am working on a piece, not, uh, not to be released in mass production, but I think it's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and hop to that real quick. Uh, if you go to, wait, did I have my, oh, I did. Okay, cool. If I hop over to here, would I like to save changes? Uh, I already did save changes. I'll just make sure one more time. Hold on one moment. Uh, sure. Haro Des. All right. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for saying something. Uh, it's great. It's it's funny. It's a funny story there. You're watching an American arm wrestler. All right. Oh, this is the piece I was talking about right here. As you can see, I was mentioning earlier in my video, the first, I think, three minutes or so, three to five minutes, of what my intentions are. I... Uh, I did broadcast a lot of the process with this piece. However, I moved on to Twitch to do a lot of the posing and refinement of the piece. If you're not familiar with the show, there is a fight that happens in one of the episodes of All Might versus this beast, this monster character. And I sculpted each of the characters uh, out, of, you know, out of nothing. So I start from the beginning, scratch, and then I made them in T-pose and I posed them to be fighting each other. I made a few different poses and I felt this one was pretty cool. Uh, originally I was going to give him his plus ultra right here uh, but I didn't like it. I was going to put it across his hand here. Kind of like that or something. I don't know. It was something like that. Getting it ready. But I thought it was too distracting so I think I'm just going to keep it this way. I plan on printing it to be about 12 10 inches tall for sure at least maybe bigger but if I was to ever mold and cast it that would be a lot of silicone and resin for something that people probably would think is too large all right let's hop over back to Popeye all right I just wanted to let people know that I did show it earlier uh, back to Popeye right here uh, probably has been changed did I say changes no I sure it has been changed but dog good all right I'll just let you guys know so just so you know what I'm doing here, the process and everything. I'm going to add his little cap here real quick, his little sailor hat. Uh, to do that, I'm going to actually append a different shape. It's like clay. If you have clay, I'm pretty much taking a ball of clay, and I am squishing it in such a way. So I'm going to start with a sphere. Say I took a ball of clay. I, I made it into a ball, and I have it there separately. So that's what I'm doing here is what the equivalent of it is. It's a ball of clay. All right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to deform it so that it is the shape I want. Uh, I'm going to make the bottom of it flat. Actually, not yet. Uh, the cool thing about the, the whole uh, the whole digital aspect is that I can have it mirrored. So whatever I do on one side, it does to the other. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. 
There is an option here if you want to, if you guys want to check it out. There is a deformer tool uh, right here where I can go ahead and actually take what I want, and then I could go ahead and kind of compress it a bit here. Uh, take that right there, kind of making his hat right there, kind of something like. Oops. Oh, no. Kind of something like that. I'm going to take this right here. I'm going to pull this. Kind of pull it down, I suppose. I'm going to probably accept this, maybe. Let me check real quick. I want to take this here. Whoops. Uh, the cool thing, there is a symmetry option. Whoa. Oh, never mind. I'm not going to do that then. Uh, it does not want me to. Okay, never mind. I'm just going to save that. Let's go to this here. Uh, accept. The hat seems pretty large. I'll fix that in a moment. Oh, I hope I didn't... <laughs> take too long to respond. Do keep in mind that when I am uh, broadcasting, I do not have the separate window open. Uh, it is in the... Oh, shoot. Uh, do keep in mind, I do try to answer the qu any kind of questions. It just uh, might take me a little bit to kind of get to it. Oh, I do not want that brush. Not yet. I'm trying to keep the geometry as it is. I have a point here. Let's go ahead and uh, move this down, shrink it. Let's move this forward. Not exactly the same kind of model I had for the pop I made. Uh, this needs to be decimated a little. Uh, the geometry is a little too high. In this case, what I would have done I was taking I would have taken like a flat edge tool. Uh, there's like a series of wax tools or dentist tools, or no, it's actually a wax tool. I want to say dentists. Dentists don't have uh, flat end tools really. Uh, and I would have kind of molded and flattened at the same time, kind of uh, teeter tottering it along the top to create a kind of a curve still while flattening the piece. Uh, but what I'm doing is I'm going to go to here, which allows me to create the form. In sculpting or in art in general, you have three kind of forms primary, secondary, and trietary, I believe it's called. The primary is the form itself. The secondary is pretty much, uh, uh, what is it? My mic is working right. I just want to double check my broadcast here real quick. Sorry. Bye. More realistic. Oh, it is. All right, cool. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this. If you guys want to hear music, I can go ahead and put music on. All right, I'll just have the music tab open. So royalty free music. Free, oh, not images. <laughs> music here right here the one I kind of like is a uh, purple planet or something yeah purple planet royalty free music so if you guys are interested in it I can go ahead and play some of that I have uh, I guess sneaky music right here uh, so while I go ahead and do this prior here I let you listen to some music this is from purple planet crafty critters no that sounds bad no
That's the creepy critter. Or bats in the bait. Uh, that was bats in the uh, belfry. Let's try it on the prowl. These songs are pretty quick. Uh, they're meant for, I think, shorter segments. Let's go ahead and go to like a, maybe a little scarier music with a uh, creepier. Since with Halloween coming up, you know, well, Halloween's not here for like what, another month. September, October. Yep, another month and a half. So let's go ahead and Halloween pumpkin. <laughs> So what I did here is I adjusted the body to fit uh, more properly to the side of his head as well as like uh, his arms here, just because I felt like between the like I was deciding on whether or not I should adjust the arms and the head or should I just fix the body, and the body was just the easier thing to do. I'm gonna also go ahead and maybe even separate the arms a bit, like make the shoulders broader. I want Popeye to be a little more menacing, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and. Do that real quick, right here, and I'm gonna go to my move tool here, and I'm gonna go ahead and select multiple sub tools right here. I'm only gonna right here, select that. I'm gonna don't want his arms too broad, I suppose. All right, then I could go ahead and just a little bit, just a smudge. You'd be surprised how much that does. But uh, yeah. Oh, hey, uh, is this your main job, making models your? Uh... Oh no. Oh hey, it looks like Mario's hat. True. True. I could put an M on that. Uh, not my main job. It's I'm more of a freelance. I kind of do. Uh, I do projects. I do. Uh, I make stuff for uh, clients for like their private collection or something, or or they want to make a gift, something unique for another person. Uh, but this is definitely something I've been doing for a while. I've done a lot of clay which is how my videos on YouTube kind of uh, began. Uh, I do more digital because when I was doing clay, it got too messy. Like seriously, I got clay on the floors. 
especially when it was on tile. Like, it's a good thing it came off tile quick. Carpet is a no-no. Uh, it was just really messy. The, the good thing about traditional sculpting is the fact that you know you have a high resolution, high resolution model. However, the downside is if you're doing a, if you're doing a uh, commission, you kind of lose that model unless you make a, uh, unless you make a, a model of, or a molding cast of it. Which I kind of like to kind of stay away from the resin, but I, I think I might want to make uh, some duplicates or copies of um, of that one piece, the Boku no Hero Academia piece, the All Might versus the Nomu. It's been a while since I made a a copy here. So um, if you want, you gotta you gotta you came here at a good time. You're gonna see me actually beef up the character here, adding the muscles and details to everything. So. Uh, you know, I started this broadcast with making his head, and I made his head so far on this broadcast. Uh, let's go ahead and start making the chest here. Um, not my main job. It kind of was at a point. Uh, it's kind of freelancing. Uh, so it's fun. I, I definitely like sculpting. Just kind of, I don't know. Sometimes you get that artist block at times. Um, and it's just kind of a uh, kind of sucks kind of become quite unproductive and you got to kind of get through that I think with me getting back into my uh, other job I um, I think that's helped me kind of get back on track with trying to work more I was just my I was a little I was a tad bit injured uh, good thing it was nothing severe and I just haven't I didn't feel very productive I, I did feel productive, but at the same time, I feel like it was kind of hard to start it. So I'm just kind of happy that everything's good. The MRI says fine. And everything, so it's all good. So I'm just kind of adding the muscles and shapes right here. Um, but it's great that you stopped, that I stopped by. Maybe you could watch a little more. Oh shoot! Oops. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this uh, this project so far. It's funny that you're watching that video of that Armstrong, uh, that not Armstrong, that uh, arm wrestler, uh, Popeye. That's funny. Very strange for me for you to have a, another uh, an update or a. It was just strange, I guess overall. Sorry, I'm just kind of doing this here. But if you're interested in hearing a particular kind of song or something, like uh, maybe it's not creepy, I don't know. I just thought with Halloween coming up, you know, in about a month or so, I thought it would be kind of interesting to hear. I'm going to make this Popeye intimidating to someone not to mess with, man. What, Boris? Is that his name? What was it? The guy that... Uh... can't think of his name right now, but this, this Popeye is going to be... Gonna have some spinach, too much spinach, man. Try to create the rib cage effect right here, along with kind of the kind of like the abs right here. The rule of thumb with the abs is that you based on the hip line right here, or the the that the uh, I can't think of it right now. Uh, it's kind of like around the navel. Uh, the lines, wherever it is, you kind of point those lines down on the top and bottom abdominal. So it, the lower the abs get, the more flatter they become and more uh, upward they become, uh, as lower they get. So that's kind of the way I'm kind of applying it right here. I'm going to also take the brush right here. I can play the music in if you like. Uh, do keep in mind, it takes me about a minute or so every so often to check the broadcast uh, to see any comments. I don't have my... Uh, my uh, my uh, thing uh, next to me right now, but I might give him another pack. I might give him an eight pack. I feel like a six pack may not be as intimidating. Also, I feel like he uh, Papa is surprisingly lanky, so I don't want to make him too large though. But I do want to make him quite intimidating. Oh, wrong brush, BCB here. So. And then I'm gonna. So the interesting thing, there are obliques, the muscle that goes over right here. I want to give him more of a hip here. The muscle goes this way down. I'm gonna have to definitely beef him up more right here. Don't 
want to give him too much of a hiss that he's like a. That seems too feminine. Maybe make his shoulders broader. But that's there. All right, how's your day, uh, Harodes? I hope I'm saying it right. Haro, Haru, Haro. Harodes. I know uh, in Japanese that U isn't really pronounced in uh, Japanese. So. All right, let's go ahead and start making the pecs a little more prominent. So what I mean is that I'm going to... Let me go ahead and before I do that, let's add more of a line right here. Right there. The way it works, I'll go ahead and draw it real quick, is that it's very fan shaped. So if you have the pecs here, so you got the kind of the top, you got the middle, and you got the lower. As you can see, it's kind of a fan. So the way it has to do is you gotta tuck under the other. Kind of like this right here. Got that fan shape, and that's where I uh, normally the I'm, so what I'm doing digitally, I use the clay built up brush here. It's very similar to me adding strips of clay to the to the model or whenever I sculpt uh, with clay. Very similar to it, so I kind of allows me to kind of beef it up a bit in a sense. Also, give it kind of some stridations here, which is very much like the uh, the uh, effect with the uh, with clay, kind of the same one, right there. Um, I'm probably going to. Uh, I might. I'm going to beef his ribs up a bit more. I'm going to make it more of a barrel chest. So I want to take the move brush here. We're gonna kind of beef it up the rib cage. I'm going to draw. It's not going to be permanent, so you can kind of have an idea of what it is. Uh, so the rib cage. So I put lines of how the rib cage would be. This is not going to be permanent. I'll return it back. The rib cage follows this line shape kind of. It's a very kind of it's more like it's more like that. So you can see the rib cage right here is going to be like that. So I had to beef it out some more so it's more uh, so so this is before kind of flat. It kind of doesn't make sense and now it has more rounded. It's more rounded so it's better. So BMV right here. Uh, but if you guys have anything you want to see or if you feel I'm very open to uh, Not that I'm open to criticism, but I'm also open to any kind of improvement made to the broadcast so I can keep the broadcast entertaining So you guys just feel like that uh, If you don't get bored at all, I'm gonna bring the chest out some more Be afraid to say something, just so that. Yeah, so sorry, just a little quiet. Just it'll it'll change in a moment. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, turn that music on so you guys can definitely listen to some stuff uh, while I work, especially when I get quiet. But don't hesitate to. Uh, comments for anything or give suggestions like I'm very open to recommend recommend uh, recommending certain pieces uh, now if you show up to the broadcast just now go ahead and if you want to see that no move versus all mic piece I could go ahead and flash back to that real quick uh, I might do that every so often I'm just working on the Popeye one uh, if you read the broadcast title it does say a preview of the all my no move piece and then it says then sculpting uh, Popeye just go back in the broadcast and you can go ahead and see that see the progress of it. It's pretty much nearly finished. I just have to put some final details and slice it so it's ready for 3D printing. The piece, the model will probably be cut down to probably 16 pieces, which means it'll be printed in 16 different pieces, and that's going to take a while. Uh, the nice thing about traditional sculpting is the fact that you have it printed already, I suppose, using your skill. And that was one of the best things about it. But the thing about traditional is that things could get easily damaged, uh, which kind of I was very sad about when it got damaged. But yeah, right there. But I was told that uh, watching digital is equally entertaining. I won't say equally, but almost equally entertaining. Uh, I'm gonna just these pants right here. Let's go to BMV right here. I'm gonna pull these pants up to right here. Right there, I'm gonna bring 
gets his glutes out. He has no butt. His butt's gone. But he's suffering from no buttitis. He's like thin with two ends. He's not thick. <laughs> sometimes the funny thing is my characters get pretty thick sometimes in certain areas. In all the right areas. I'm just going to add this. I'm going to just make a kind of a rectangle with it. Since pants are on, I'm not trying to go for any kind of details. It's very important that when you add features and shapes, especially under clothing, that you don't go too crazy with the detail. I want to bring the, the crotch of his pants up a bit more. It's not exactly prop right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and, and take this right here and then kind of go like that right there. Uh, there it goes. Now he's a bit, now he's a, a tad bit thick. Thick with one C. <laughs> or maybe he is maybe a little thick. Whoa. Donk donk. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Let's go ahead and fix that a bit. Let's bring this up a little more. I think that's right. Uh. Yeah, that's right. Uh, do keep in mind that the hips, the pelvis, does have a slight tilt or angle. So, uh, going back to this model right here, if I go to the solo right here, you can see the pelvis is now tilted. So I have to bring this up. So it is. But I want to go give him a little bit of tonka tonk. Whoop. All right. So now it has a tilt there. Now the back will seem will make more sense, uh, especially when I bring everything back. Now I can go ahead and bring the rest of it up back right here, so it doesn't look strange. Cheeks, <laughs> thick and not thick. All right, that's pretty good. I was making some pinup figures on here. Uh, I finished making the Fallout one, and the Jesse pinup figure that I was making earlier is pretty much done. Uh, I just been a little sidetracked. I said before, uh, I was actually working solid as. Uh, Solid like 36 hours last few days. Um, uh, my my work is kind of uh, right now going to be a little sporadic, uh, but I, so I feel like I should take the time to actually sculpt more. So yeah, you're going to see more work sculpting wise. Uh, the resolution of this model is a little too much. If I take this right here, not bad though. Yeah, I definitely like the torso more. If you check the beginning of the broadcast, he looked very weak. He was not very intimidating. Much I definitely like the changes here. So I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna start go ahead and refining the details. Uh, details about the back is that you want a kite shape right here. So if you can, if you check here, I'll make the line a little more intense, right here, and then kind of like right here and down like this. And you can see here it looks like kind of like a kite that you fly in the sky. All right. I should tell you too, that's not bad. I'm gonna probably actually kind of just smooth that out and keep the shape. And it makes a point down here. So that's kind of the rules. When you're making stuff statue-wise, it's very uh, similar to, you wanna use shapes that you're familiar with and you wanna keep track. It's much easier to remember. And also I'm gonna make sure I carve this line down along the center here. So it's very important, you know, we have spines and we also have a part here, part of our, part of our spine where uh, the traps don't exactly it's not like pure muscle, it's like a, if it thinks the sixth vertebrae down, so it's definitely very important to know your anatomy. Oh my gosh, that don't happen there. Uh, so just kind of making this line here. I am not using a tablet with a, what that has a screen. I'm not using like a Cintiq. I'm just using, very surprisingly, a $60 tablet for a lot of my work. I would, I would probably say it would probably be very easy for me to go ahead and, uh, and uh, what was it? and use a Cintiq because, you know, I'll be drawing on a screen as opposed to kind of guessing uh, where, I, where I'm drawing. So there's also a thing of muscle right here that run, runs parallel along with the spine right there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and beef up this part right here. So it should be kind of a cylinder shape. And that should be very gradual, so I'll smooth that out right there. Smoothing is so much like rubbing alcohol to Super Sculpey. Super Sculpey is the material you see me uh, in the previous videos that I would use when I would make traditional sculptures. 
is actually quite nice. However, I hear a very mixed response about using Sculpey. Sculpey does can be a little annoying at times, uh, and people usually recommend wax, so you can keep a lot of better detail with your uh, keep your detail intact. Sculpey has a tendency of being quite soft, so it could be kind of annoying. Oops. So if you were wondering about those other videos, what material I was using, it was Sculpey. I'm just kind of repositioning the muscle. I mentioned before there are shapes. So it's uh, the shape of the deltoids tend to be very kind of teardrop, uh, not teardrop, like from this angle, maybe like a teardrop top. It's almost like a triangle, I suppose, with rounded edges, or rounded corners at the bottom. Uh, but do keep in mind also about the anatomy of it, which results in about three chunks or three sections. You got the middle, the front, and back. Uh, it's very important. I would say definitely uh, know, see the anatomy of our average person and then check out the, the, uh, the bodybuilder anatomy. Definitely something. Uh, so let's say A, B, C, D right here. All right there. Let's go ahead and I'm going to play some music. I'm going to go ahead and start working on the details. And yeah, uh, and I'm not showing the no move piece. I feel like some people are showing up like, where's the piece? Where's the piece? I'm like, I'm sorry. Just check back at the broadcast. Don't worry, when people watch this video later on that pops up their feed when the it's released. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think I should hide this one like I did the previous video. After the last time I broadcasted on here, I actually, uh, it was up for only a little bit and then I hid the video uh, as unlisted, I think or private. So just basically if I just go down like this, basically if I ever use the clay builder brush, just imagine me using a series of clay tubes, traditionally like clay coils or worms, some people like to call it. And I'm just kind of just placing in these the muscle striations. That's what I'm doing right here. I just love sculpting muscles. I'm using also. I'm also kind of taking away a bit to kind of just add kind of a kind of a randomness right there. Kind of low resolution right now. I'll fix that a bit later. Uh, now the thing about this uh, kite shaped muscle on the back, the traps, uh, you do have to keep in mind though that this muscle does curve around to the front of the collarbone here. So I want to go ahead and add this little curve right here. Nice little curve. There it goes. I think I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the uh, the uh, Sculptors Pro, so I can go ahead and start getting some more ref better refined details. Keep it so that it has geometry. So if you check back here, you can see see how these are all perfectly aligned right here, squares, and this is all a mess. It's because it's the Sculptors Pro tool. Uh, it allows me to add geometry. So if I go back. See right here, along the shoulder, you can see that they're not so clean anymore because detail's been added to it due to the Sculptors, Prush, uh, Sculptors Pro uh, option being selected. It's very much feel it's very free. I feel very close to traditional sculpting. All right, so that's the crazy thing. I don't have to des I don't have to like keep going back and forth with the Dynamesh option, which is great. So let's hop back here. Let's go ahead. I don't like how his chest is looking here. It looks a little off. So I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go there. Let's go ahead and start uh, BDS right here. I like the chest being more like that. So I'm gonna go actually add some more. Gotta make sure, remember, fan shape. Always important to remember, fan shape. I'm also gonna add a little more muscle right here. The way the pecs work is they go along the rib cage. So if you think parallel with the, uh, the bottom of the ribs right here, you'll get a more kind of realistic look here. I'm gonna also add, start adding the straightest anterior muscle, which is a muscle that moves in a pattern. I'll go ahead and draw it real quick. The muscle goes like kind of like this. So this is kind of the path it goes along right here. Uh, it's kind of like a half rainbow, I suppose, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, it's uh, strips of muscle that look like a series of arrows running along the you know bodybuilders uh, under their pecs between their 
lats and their pecs. So uh, let's go BCB right here. Uh, the way it works typically is if I go like kind of like this with it, just kind of like that. I'll go and build on top of that. Uh, the rule for this is that the uh, these muscles almost uh, the these muscles go underneath these muscles right here, which then connects to the shoulder blade. So that's why the general rule of thumb with these muscles is how thick they should be. Should be usually, uh, so the the beginning, the point here will be smaller, of course, a lot more closer, flatter. It weeds around the obliques, or the abdominal muscles. So what I want to do is I want to make sure I buff up the back here and make it a little wider because they are, as I said before, like arrows, right here, right there, and kind of right here. The usual amount is usually three, and there's usually like a one you kind of see right here not too well. I am going to go ahead and probably carve that point I mentioned earlier. I kind of like that right there. I want to make this one a little more so I'll make it a little more severe. I can always tweak these a little bit in a moment. Like I want to use a move brush here. I want to have more angle to it. And if I want, I can always move it out more, the part I want, so that. Now, do keep in mind, though, uh, that remember the rib cage does curve in, so there should be no reason why this one should be further out than the one on the bottom, just because of the way the, the rib cage anatomy is. So I might even try to take this away, uh, BCB right here. Uh, Usually it's very prominent at the lower ones, but it shouldn't be too prominent along the top. So if you ever want to make the, the chest here, the pecs, you want to start from the bottom and then start going up and wrapping it. Just as kind of like a thing. We just go here and then it goes over the other. It creates that fan shape. You know how fans are, how they are inter uh, intertwine with each other? They stack on top of the other at the base. So that's kind of what you do with the... Uh, not all the time, I don't do that kind of process all the time, but it does make it the easier way of doing it. See, as you can see here, you kind of create that pattern right there. I will start sculpting the neck muscles a little more, as well as the arms soon in a moment. Um, let me just go ahead and just refine this a bit. There is a triangle here due to the fact that the sternocomactoid, or I can't, forgive me for butchering that word, but it connects to the sternum. So you got the collarbone that goes in the front and there's a sternum, so there's a little dip here. Which then, uh, the, these muscles connect right under, past the clavicle to the sternum, since the sternum, the, uh, clav the collarbone sticks out a little more further, so it's a little more prominent, a lot, some, uh, usually. But when it comes to bodybuilding a lot of time, the muscle, that uh, the pecs run on, kind of, kind of merge with the uh, collarbone, just because if there's a small amount of fat uh, very small. Um, it kind of acts as filler and it creates the illusion of muscle being part of like the structure. It's just it's just very important when you have these pecs that they match with the kind of the anatomy of the collarbone. And there is bone right here because what happens is there is a small section that muscle does not run very strong at, um, and that tends to be where the uh, the the deltoids start at. So there is a small little section here. And also, the neck right here is a little off because there is a muscle underneath that goes straight down to the rib cage here, um, right there. And I did mention there's that little muscle here that this muscle is part of the same thing that comes around the side of the jaw here. You could feel it if you turn your head and kind of crunch it down and you flex it. Yeah, you could feel the. You could like push against your head, push push your head in a direction, and feel the side that you're pushing towards, and you can feel that muscle along the side of your neck, right here. This one right here, not so much this one. This one is kind of a rare thing to, find, uh, to really see too much in people. Go ahead and add a bit more here. I like to add more muscle closer to increase the. There it goes. Oops. 
remember, just want to say is if anyone's just showing up, I did show the Nomu versus All Might piece. I showed it in the very beginning, and I just showed it maybe about 15 minutes ago once again. If you do want to see it again, I can go ahead and switch back to it. Uh, just make sure you go ahead and uh, comment on it, and I'll do it. I want to make sure everyone's see, had an opportunity to see it. Got a lot of positive uh, comments on it. People were interested in actually having it. It was interesting. It's not the first time I've had I made so many people were interested in having a copy of it. All right, now this is very important here. The anatomy is very uh, very off due to the fact that this muscle looks like it's connected to the joint as opposed to being connected across the joint, meaning that this muscle needs to go up here like this. And the same thing goes for this muscle right here as well. This muscle needs to go up to here across the joint. Same with the other muscles too. The other muscles do the same thing, but they're usually hidden under this one, these two, uh, these two muscles, the very superficial muscles, which I'll have to adjust in a moment uh, because the form is not right. I'm gonna just bring these arms out a bit, just so they stay as Popeye status. Right here. I want to bring this, make this a little more prominent. You, you, you do have two bones in your arm, uh, in your forearm, I should say. Three bones if you could, the, your whole arm, the humerus. Nothing funny about that, but it's a funny name. I wonder who, what scientist or whatever came up with the name for that bone. Must have been a funny doctor or funny. That's like the easiest bone to remember, the humerus. Like, uh, you just think of like the bone telling jokes to the other bones. All right, what's the funny bone, the humerus? So, another thing about these lats is they're broken up into kind of three sections as well. There's a top portion right here, a middle portion, and a bottom portion, and they are kind of similar to the pecs, where they are kind of fan shaped. So, if I go like this right here, as you can see, it creates that illusion of depth of it going under the other. And these, this part right here is connected to the top of the shoulder blade. The shoulder blade is a weird triangle with kind of like a crest or kind of a little little peninsula or something on it. So, yeah, so you got that right there, and then you got kind of like the other muscles right there. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this down right here. I kind of don't like how his head is shaped right now. I'm probably going to fix that right, uh, kind of. Oh, his head's gone. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Let's see his head. Now, this head is all kind of wrong. You got his forehead here, but the, the peak is just everywhere. Uh, just, the peak is right here, and the peak should be the back of the head, closer to the ear. Uh, stuff I kind of picked up definitely helped a lot when you study drawings. Uh, it's definitely a great way to kind of see the actual measurements. The uh, drawing has a lot of, um, like, form. So B and V here. I want to go ahead and kind of, kind of flatten this a bit here. I'm probably even going to bring his, the bone structure of his jaw, maybe up, not his jaw, but of his cheekbone, maybe a bit more. Do keep in mind that remember, the older you are, the less, especially the more prominent the skel the skeleton or the you know the skeletal system is underneath. So bringing this in a bit will definitely help with that. I think that's better now. I can move the head actually lower now. Oops, there it goes. So pretty good for a piece I just started today, I would say. Uh, I might make his legs a little more meatier in a moment. Uh, I'm just going ahead. My file is saving right now. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Let me go ahead and hop back real quick for anyone that just stopped by, so you can see the Nomu piece, all my verse Nomu. I'm going to save here. Uh, save this here. Try to replace it. Yes. Um, 
just like this will be the break right here. I'm going to hop over there and then hop back, uh, back to this file. So Lightbox, let's go to that known loop piece right here. What I say to ensure one more time. Just it's, you can never be too cautious. Just because you know if your file becomes uh, if the program crashes, which is very rare nowadays, uh, it's always good to have backup. So as you can see here, this is the no move piece right here. The no reverse all might. Because since it's in my title, I might as well hop back to this piece every so often in the broadcast so that I can uh, hold on, uh, hold on a moment. Uh, uh, Sorry about that. All right. Cool. As I was saying, is um, as you can see, you want to see the pieces that this is in. Watch this. I was going to put the ult plus ultra on its face, but I just have that separate. Look at the pieces. It's not that many right now, but there I have more pieces separate. So these are the pieces in right now. The shirt it looks ugly. The all my body underneath. All moments. I. All right, sorry, right there. All right, so um, so you can see here, you got I started with I started with the T pose, and then I uh, I don't have it right now, but just want to show you the pieces. But you can see right here is a good example of what I have. I am probably going to have the shirt combined with here, and I have one piece to 3D print later on. Uh, but yeah, see how ugly kind of the shirt looks. But once combined, it's a lot better. So let me go ahead and combine that back again. See. I still have a little bit of detail here. I just want to show this for anyone that just hopped on. Yeah, so I'm expecting to print it in pieces. Probably it's going to end up being 16 pieces, which I'll glue, attach. Maybe I'll somehow do a time lapse of me cleaning it. Some quite a bit of sanding. Uh, cheaper to do FFF printing. Fuse fabrication. Uh, film. Wait, fuse filament fabrication. I think it was. Um, but that's what I'm going to do. It's cheaper that way. Uh, something that's the size I'm trying to go for. <laughs> Might as well print really slow. Save myself like 100 bucks, $200 for printing it. But it depends. Sometimes it might even be better to do that. Spend maybe that much. Oh well. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and go back to the uh, Popeye piece here. Would you like to save changes? Uh, no, I didn't do anything to it. All right, back to the Popeye here. Man, seeing that the like the refined muscles makes me want to like fix this a lot. I'm gonna go ahead and do what I usually do. My favorite thing I like to do style-wise with the rib cage is kind of making like oh, not that. Kind of making a like a kind of like making that prominent kind of pec ab difference right here. Right here, and then kind of like this here. And then I like to go ahead and go from here. Kind of, I'm kind of just draw out the kind of the shapes right here. Kind of the way 
and then I'll add the uh, I use the clay buildup brush that you saw earlier that I've used to kind of beef it up. Right here, and if I see anything I like, because remember, there is a set of muscle, uh, like the obliques, that coat the whole abdominal region, which leads kind of like there's like a tendon mass or something over the, uh, the abs right here. That's why sometimes there's some muscle striation that's going this direction, even though the main abs, their striations go this way go downwards uh, but due to the uh, that tendon it creates that that muscle effect going diagonally a lot of people have a uh, sometimes artists beginning artists and things like that mess up on so also I like to kind of create this fork with it with the, uh, the when it connects to the, the uh, abs right here also I want to make sure I perfect this a little better maybe Ah, this muscle though. It's been a while since I've really sorry this. Hold on. I'm just doing a little bit of a because it's the point. Where does the point start along with the in between and they stick at a slightly less angle. All right. All right, so the point is here. It's kind of good to kind of draw the shape and then fill shape and then fill it in. Just kind of pull this out right here. The, do keep in mind the muscle does continue down right here. These uh, these pointed muscles right here. Right there. Remember that rule of thumb is to make sure it's like a kind of like a rainbow it kind of goes down in an arc. And I like to go over the uh, the apex here. Let's go ahead and increase the. Uh, We'll go for like an eight pack, I suppose. Right here, right there, cut that right there. And then I'll put the little point right here along with that. So I'll cut right there for the little separation. Bring this up along with that muscle kind of intertwining with the other, along with this one right here for that. I think that's good right there. And I'll bring the pelvis. I'm gonna go ahead and mask that. Now it's very important you understand how the pelvis works. You got the kind of the main bone right there. I can't think of the name right now. There's a there is a name. And then you got kind of this right here along with kind of the pubic bone. And you got kind of this muscle. And there, there's a muscle, there's a tendon that goes across from here. I'm not sure that's the proper term for it, ligament tendon, uh, that connects down here. So it kind of makes a uh, shape right here, kind of this V, I suppose. And the V varies from men and women. Uh, men have a very angular one, while females have a more of a rounded one. But yeah, so but do guys let me know if you. I'm very open to suggestions when it comes down to uh, like improvements to the broadcast. Uh, what you want to see on the channel, that's the thing. I. I'm not a mind reader. Originally, I, I'm very open with the stuff I have. Like, 
if you want to see traditional, I'll try to get around to get, setting a camera up. It's not my most preferred way of making stuff anymore. Just because I said before, I can't keep copies of my work. And it's kind of sad. It's nice that other people can enjoy it, but I can't reference back to it or potentially just sell copies of it. Digital kind of allows me to do that. Um, so yeah. Uh, Oh, of course, of course. The arm. There's two muscles that go here. It's not just one. Of course. I forgot. It's been a while since I um, had to deal with that. This muscle goes around here like this. Hold on. A, this muscle splits into uh, splits in half. Let me just go ahead and smooth this out real quick so I can have something easier to sculpt on when I cut away from it. I'm looking at my reference model that I made of this character before, and uh, it's not exact. I have because I have gotten better since then, but it is nice to kind of have for uh, it's kind of a reminder on what to do here. Got that now. This muscle goes like this around. Now I'm gonna go take this muscle right here, which tends to be pretty prominent. take this and make sure I carve it out right here properly and there is a muscle that goes around here for the thumb right here and this goes like that right here and this is the part for the tendons right there smooth this out a bit not too much geometry not too much geometry right now there it goes. All right, sorry. Let's go ahead and get some music here. With Halloween, as I said before, coming up, let's go ahead and go for more of that creepy music. Why not? Trick or Treat from Purple Planet. Okay, it's kind of creepy. Interesting. Let's go dance of death, I suppose.
what I've been doing here now is I'm checking the side profile and the hands and arms are getting away. So I'm going, I'm trying to, uh, I want to hide the fist real quick. As you can see here, I don't, I, this can work, but I don't like how the rib cage isn't very prominent. I always like to have a sharp angle, which is a nice contrast to like the back portion. I like to bring that out. Same goes for the back right here. I really like to make sure, I like to keep this, this contrasting look. Got the back right here with the lats. Gotta pull the back portion right here out. Got to tuck this in right here. And that's better already. Much better. It's very important to know your kind of your your uh, the flow of your your work. You'd never want anything to be the same on both sides. You want it very contrasting. It's very more much more appealing to the eye. And now I can go ahead and bring everything back. So it's not so much in the way. I there might be a sh button shortcut for me to go ahead and hide things quickly if I'm on that certain uh, that if I have that tool selected. Let's go ahead and uh, start to detail the legs here. Right there. I'll turn the music on in just a moment. Uh, I still feel like the I feel like the legs take too much away. I feel like they're too large. Maybe I went too far with the enlargement of them. There it goes. I'm gonna go ahead and flatten this here. All right, so that's better. I think the thing that was bothering me was the head was uh, not large enough. I'm gonna also go ahead and bring out the uh, the separation portion. Maybe it's just not right. Hold on. Yeah, I'm gonna move it here. Right there, perfect, perfect. All right, nice, nice. All right, remember, guys, just to let you know, I'm not gonna buy it or anything. So just, I am, I am just stressing this because I do care, and I want you guys to be entertained. I gotta find a balance between what you guys would like to see and what I would like to do and see if there's any way I can go ahead and pull it off so we're all happy. All right, just, just saying. Super saying, no. I think what bothers me is because I like the piece I made a while ago because it has a certain ge a certain uh, look to it. BCB. You know how it is. It's just that you do something. I think it's all. I did spend quite a bit of time on it. So uh, the way it looks in a particular way is because it probably I took time in uh, getting it that way. Just the emphasis on the the uh, anatomy is nice. I just love the anatomy. I always like to make some kind of anatomy that's just overdone. A little bit overkill maybe. But yeah, so I'll resume the music in a moment. All right, music, music, music. I will probably hand make the 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 pipe he has. I don't think it's. I'll I'll digitally sculpt it. I just won't. Just won't. Um, I 
I will see. Uh, BCB, I'm gonna give him a little lips. Uh, the interesting thing is that Oh, a moment. Um, is that lips on older people tend to vanish? Not vanish, but they tend to be very—they thin out. Near. There it goes. Kind of. I might just get rid of overall, just move it out to the point. Just I want a hint of it, um, but like that right there. All right, let's go back to the eyes right here. The eyes need work. I think it's because I, he has a very smug look, I think, with the one I have. That's why I have his eyes and everything posed. Um, I don't want to do any kind of facial gesture just yet until I have exactly what I, what is this? Hold on. Oh no. Oh wait. All right, hold on. I accidentally uh, smoothed out the eyes. I don't want the eyes to be smoothed out yet. Fix this again. CB right here. So the way the eyelids work is that the top one goes over the bottom one. So it's important when you sculpt eyelids that you have that noticeable overlap. I'm gonna carve this out. There's a there's like a, a divot or something here. The eye sockets. You want to make sure you have that that little indent here. There should be a very noticeable kind of kind of bridge here, which I need to bring out. Uh, sorry, I was going to turn the music on, huh? All right, let me go ahead and do that real quick. Remember, I said before, if you want to see any previous other pieces I've made previously, I'll go ahead and show real quick. I might even make the kind of spinach maybe in this one. I'm just interested in just making sure I have the overall appearance of Popeye. His chin was really large actually in the cartoon, so it's very important you have a reference here. Interesting thing is that like when you make expressions you can be a little You could definitely manipulate the bone structure underneath, like in a way that emphasizes the the expression to like enforce it. So I think that's kind of a funny little thing that artists can just do in general. Also, males have a very prominent uh, brow line as well as a protrusion of the forehead. Uh, the uh, hold on, my game, my game, uh, not game, my um. Software ZBrush is saving here real quick. One moment, it's saving the undo history. So if I ever choose to make a time lapse video of it, of the process alone, without uh, that's very efficient. I can uh, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna probably cancel that that option once I get to a certain point. Uh, yeah, it's just saying file in progress. I'm not sure if it pop, it's popping up on your. Uh, yeah, it does show. On your guys's end, it's a saving project file in progress. It's a lot of it's taking a lot of memory for me to save all this information. It'd actually be more beneficial if I was to have the that off, and then go ahead and time lapse it through the other little kind of uh, thing, it, uh, other option it has. Oh, there it goes. It's done. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and actually do that. The reason, uh, the thing is that I can also use the footage I have from YouTube and Twitch uh, for this figure already, and I could just go ahead and download it and then just time lapse it. it was, uh, I could just edit it, is what I'm trying to say. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and uh, turn off undo history. I'm gonna save as as my uh, 
Popeye. I call it Popeye 2 now. There it goes. Now, see, boom, saved in like half a second compared to like, the, I don't know how long it was. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and these legs are very short in the cartoon. You know, a long time ago, like one of my first commissions was making a Popeye and olive oil, the way it was in the cartoon. And uh, they were basically, it was, I think, a, I think it was for a friend that was going to propose or something. Or was it get? I, I don't remember what it was exactly. But it took me a while because it was one of my first things. And man, I'm going to say I got gypped, but it was one of my first pieces. I took pictures of it. Such an old piece. I was just starting off with commissions at the time. You know, you have to get it work somehow, you know, to start. I'll have to make one eye winking, or you know how he has that one eye uh, closed? I'll do that in a moment. Just gotta make sure this is prominent here. Probably actually shrink his head a bit more. Yeah, it's not making sense. BMB. I'll bring his ear more forward. Hold on a moment. I have the ear. Oops. Oh my gosh. Come on. Come on. I can do it. better. I can move the hat lower now. I like to keep the hat down to the uh, close to the ears there. Let me give away give him a flat base to stand on. Now I want to wrap this up soon. Maybe I'll make something uh, I might hop over to Twitch or somehow I'll link my Twitch and my uh, YouTube together and have me on both. Uh, the issue with that is I don't have the full version of this, so it doesn't let me do that. The broadcasting software. I don't have that. Uh, hold on. And I don't have it yet. I have to pay for it to be able to have it. I have to pay for the full full version for me to go ahead and have that. For me to go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and give that a base, and let's give maybe a fake little can kind of tuna, or not tuna, pfft, I'm not talking about a tuna, a spinach, tuna. Let's go give him a base. Um, the original sculpture I did of it, I had it on like a rectangular base with like a bevel corner, with beveled corners. I'm gonna go ahead and actually keep that going, I suppose. Parking. How annoying. Have to stop her soon. Um, no, it's looking great so far. Uh, let me go ahead and add the uh, add the little. It's gonna, I'm just gonna add a cylinder. So bit right here. 
I want to have like the lid broken off, you know, like as he is in, he used it. I'll pose him and I'll slight, I'll turn him a little bit, have his head, his head, uh, what is it called? What, his head cocked or something? Uh, his head is still not the way. It's close. I think I have to maybe bring that, I have to make the hat narrower probably. I'll put his head as a tilt later, as if he's a little ticked. Okay, so the can of tuna will be right here, off to the side of him. It would probably be a... What the heck? Try that again. And it's supposed to fit in his hand, so it's going to be an awfully large can of tuna. So I'm going to actually kind of enlarge this here. I'm going to move the base over. I'll probably put it behind him, maybe. Now, did I say tuna again? Hold on, something's not right about the can. Oh my gosh, it is not right. Hold on. The camera was not flat. I hate when it does that. It looks like it tricked me. Okay, switch that. Let's move this this way. Then this back. I'll turn a slight angle where his left side would be forward more. His body would be angled to the direction. So it'll be directed to. So the way it's going to work is that his body's be turned that way. So turn to the right. It'll be turned this way. Uh, and his head will be turning to the left, looking forward. His arms will be at one high arm will be higher than the other. This one will be down here. This one will be higher. And his one eye will be closed, of course. You know, his usual look. Uh, his pipe will be there, too. I don't like it stuff. That's when I get to posing it. But I think this is a great first uh, like first session. Well, it's kind of like, I guess it's the second session. But I consider a first session since I did broadcast. But then I had to go somewhere. So I had to end the broadcast. And then I came back about an hour later, hour and a half later to do. But um, yeah, let me get let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'll save as Popeye 2. I save it in stages. Uh, so there's that Popeye there and then here is the Nomu. So I'll just switch back and forth real quick. Oh, I guess we change what you have to say changes, sure, just in case. You can't be too cautious. So here is that uh, the Nomu piece here. So there's the All Might vs. Nomu. All right, just one last go around with it. I'll pop back to the bot by. I'll wrap up the broadcast. I'm not sure if I'll leave it up. I might make it a, pri a private broadcast once a uh, private video once it's uploaded. But yeah, I just want to show this real quick. And then we hop back over to the Popeye. I'll pose it soon, maybe even tomorrow actually. I'm, tonight I might actually pose the Aang from Avatar Last Airbender into, onto his air scooter. Uh, so you can look forward to that if you want. Uh, Aang is probably going to be printed out maybe eight inches tall on his air scooter. That might be too big, actually, now I think about it. He might have to be printed six inches, maybe, because he'd be crouching. No, no, no. Yeah, eight inches sounds about right. But yeah, I really like how it came out so far. The face still bothers me a little bit. I've got to add the details to the shoes and add the creasing along the pants and everything.
But I'd like to say thanks guys for watching. If you want, the video will be up for probably the, for one hour once it's uploaded. Uh, you can check the broadcast right now. Um, I just basically pretty much just added details on all the, a lot of refinements within the last hour and 40 minutes. Uh, I do intend uh, on downloading it and or downloading it onto my computer and then editing it so that it's sped up. Thanks to the new beefy computer I have, I can definitely process videos or post-process them a lot better. Uh, I guess I'll get the time lapse up this week. I've been uh, put to the side because my other computer sucked. Um, had, it's a gaming laptop and it had terrible heating. I recommend not to buy MSI computers unless you know you check a review and see if it's really positive and it has awesome cooling. I have a desktop computer, which is the smart move to do. And yeah, uh, tell me, let me know comments in the bottom or in the broadcast right now about what you think of the piece. Does it look like him? Does it seem like it would be him? Oh, well, you know, obviously the big arms, the kind of the short body, kind of a little lanky along with his big chin. And kind of a sailor hat, of course, kind of hints or indications of it. Is he intimidating? Uh, I want to have the can of spinach, all that good stuff. I like to say thanks, guys. Uh, uh, I will be going on Twitch as well. Uh, it's in the description below. If you check it out. Uh, uh, that's where I made a lot of the Nomu versus All Might uh, changes and uh, refinements at. And yeah, I look forward for more stuff. And uh, like all I can say is thanks, guys, for being uh, for stopping by. And I hope to enjoy. Let me know what you'd like to see in future broadcasts or future videos. All right, cool. Thanks.